Councillor Foster. Thanks again. Um, thanks again to uh, community members tonight who have taken the time to make their views known. And I know that uh, community members outside this room have also taken the time uh, with many councillors uh, to, make, uh, to make known their views. I'm not going to speak for too long initially. I know that councillors would want a turn to put their views as well and to have them on the record. Um, for the record, uh, I know that uh, most people already know this, but just so this can be made abundantly clear, in no way am I against bike paths, and in no way do I want to see uh, the, uh, the further development of bike paths around the city in any way inhibited. This motion, you can, I, I suppose some people would like to make this motion about bike paths versus no bike paths, and it's not that at all. If you look at the content of the motion, it doesn't even touch the sides of that. What it does do is it gives the community an opportunity to make their concerns known and to have those concerns addressed. What's been pointed out to me, especially in the last few days, is that there doesn't appear to have been an adequate opportunity for that to have occurred. I don't actually know that those concerns are overly valid. I don't know that they're not valid either. And I think that's what this is about. That's what this motion is about. It's about trying to identify whether or not they're valid and trying to make the community feel that at least they've been heard and had their concerns addressed. Councillor Foster, would you like to conclude debate? Thank you, Lord Mayor, um, and thank you for all those comments. Just on a point of clarity, um, in relation to Councillor Oak's point, I did actually leave a voicemail message for Councillor Oak last week expressly in relation to this issue and didn't receive a return call. Um, on the issue of the transport portfolio meeting, I understand that work would have actually been underway by that point, which is why I moved the motion in advance of that meeting. Um, sometimes it does, as Councillor Main sort of touched on, sometimes it does take, albeit a... Um, an unrealistic or a logical splash in the mainstream media to start getting people's attention on these issues. It's, I think we all understand, it's not entirely realistic to expect that every single quarter of the community is, is as engaged with the council, despite all our best efforts, as Councillor Wood pointed out, um, as we would like. That doesn't always happen. And again, the shock jocks do get a hold of things, and the Herald Sun does run things. And it does, albeit, um, create unrealistic and, uh, and irrational uh, views about otherwise very good projects. Um, that's why we wanted this, or I wanted this, addressed tonight, to give the opportunity for those community concerns to be explained away. Again, some of them may be irrational and some of them may not, but regardless, they do deserve an explanation. I think if, at the end of the day, if you're serious about bike paths, you need to have the broader community support for them. Whether or not the broader community rides a bike, whether or not they're active in cycling, you need the broader community support. I don't want to see support for bike paths get, get thrown away on the strength of some irrational arguments. I would much rather see the program continue to roll out in much the way it has been, but whilst having those those concerns addressed. Again, whether they're valid or not. I'm not making any comments about whether they're valid or not. I don't know. I think they do deserve to be addressed, though. If we lose the broader community support for these initiatives, we will find greater opposition building and we will find it much harder to get things done. And I don't want to see good programs like this stalled as a result. I need to make the point, too, that nowhere in this motion or indeed in any arguments for the motion that were put tonight has anybody suggested that Council didn't consult. No, not at all. I agree with all of that. We did consult. The previous Council consulted and consulted extensively, again, as Councillor Wood pointed out. Did it reach all sectors of the community? No, clearly it didn't, um, because it didn't change or it didn't stop, again, some concerns being raised and some serious concerns being raised, again, whether or not they're valid. Just in closing, I have to say, with the debate tonight that has been, I think, a very good and mostly informed one, mission accomplished. By virtue of moving the motion, we've had the concerns put. Hopefully, this will put aside some of the more irrational ones. Hopefully, this will silence a few of those who were really just starting, uh, starting a fight where there didn't need to be one. Hopefully, it will silence those who wanted to politicise it and simply make it uh, a, an issue whereby councillors should be able to put motions like this simply in order to address community concerns. That's what's occurred, whether or not the motion passes. So on that note, um, I'd like to thank councillors for their input. I think it's been an extraordinarily beneficial debate. I think the community's benefited from it, and I'd encourage councillors in the future to do just this sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. I'll put the motion. Those who vote yes are voting in favour of councillor Foster's motion. All those in favour? Councillor Foster... Councillor Watts, all those against? 
Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Main, Councillor Wood, Councillor Leppard, Councillor Oak, Councillor Louis, Councillor Pinder-Mortimer. The motion is lost. <laughs>